Mr. Ambassador, great to have you at the table with us. Great to be here. Under di different circumstances than we used to talk to you. <laughs> this is different. It is, right? We're not going to ask you about any tweets or anything uh, no, that's, that's great. from Thank leaders you. of your party. Um, so let's talk about what's happening um, on the ground. You have sort of a, a front row seat to it. Uh, serving inside of a NATO country, and what's going on in the place where you used to serve, which is this holdup of the aid to Ukraine. Right. What are the consequences of that? How is that being felt? Well, first, as, as Mika said, uh, Turkey's been great in terms of supporting Ukrainian sovereignty. They've supplied uh, uh, drones that have uh, been very effective there, and they invoked the Montreux Convention to keep Russian warships out of the Black Sea. That's been extremely uh, important in the war. Uh, but uh, from that seat, it's important uh, to get this aid for Ukraine. Uh, they're running out, and, uh, and they need the help. And I can tell you, if, if you want our NATO allies in the region to step up, then we have to remain committed, and that's why it's so important. One of the good things about having you as ambassador, I'm sure, was some of the thinking of President Biden is that you still know a whole bunch of people inside the, the Congress. Have you been able to prevail upon any of your old colleagues about how crucial this is? Well, I've often said that, uh, you know, regimes may change in the world, but geography doesn't. And uh, Turkey is always going to be important. And that's why when Sweden was able to get into NATO, Turkey was one of the holdouts there. They had some issues that they, they had to get resolved, and they did. <clears throat> but then uh, Congress came through with a $23 billion F-16 sale uh, right away to Turkey, which is important to keep Turkey interoperable. They have the largest army uh, outside of us in NATO and the largest air force. And so uh, it's important. Those kind of relationships are important. And I was happy that my former colleagues saw it. On this way. direct aid to Ukraine, though, are you able to make the case to any of them? I, I'm making that case, and I'm, I'm confident that they will come through with it. Uh, they mm -hmm. understand the importance of uh, keeping with our commitment. And, and the fact that if we want, as I said, our NATO regional partners to step up we have to remain committed. But let's speak to how we got here, how the Republican Party got here. We just played that ad that Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Vindman brought us using Ronald Reagan's words. Uh, th I mean, this was certainly Republicans would be at the forefront of national security and certainly the forefront to standing up against Russia. What does it look like? How do you feel about how that's deteriorated? Well, the best thing about being an ambassador is being 6,000 uh, miles away from, <laughs> from politics and not having to, to engage in partisan politics. But it, uh, but it is different. Uh, even when I was there, uh, you'd seen the trend. Um, you know, we Republicans have traditionally been the party of Reagan, of strong national defense. Um, I think there are many uh, who still retain that, uh, that creed, but, uh, you know, it's been tough to see. But I, I'm confident, like I said, that uh, we'll come through. This is a bipartisan issue. On, on the issues that I deal with, with Turkey and that part of NATO, it's been completely bipartisan when I go back to the Hill and, and ask for this or that. You know, Ambassador, you mentioned geography a couple of minutes ago. And if you're standing <clears throat> in Istanbul, you can look across and you can see Asia. Yeah. So the geography of Turkey is critical in global affairs, especially now, perhaps more than ever. How dicey is it or navigating the relationship with the United States, Turkey, and Erdogan, and Putin? That's a, a pretty complex relationship, Putin, Erdogan, and the ambassador to, the United, yeah. to Turkey. How do you do it? What, what, what are the problems, if there are any? Oh, you mentioned the proximity. I actually swam from Asia to Europe. There's a swim wow. that they do every year that you swim across the yeah. Bosphorus and yeah. you swim be between the continents. That's how close it is. Uh, and Turkey occupies that position. It allowed them to invoke the Montreux Convention. Like I said, they control the Turkish Straits. That's important. They've been an important interlocutor in terms of negotiating the grain deal initially for Ukraine to be able to get grain out of the Black Sea and, and prisoner exchanges. On sanctions, as mentioned, uh, they don't em you know, employ the same sanctions that we do. They say we have relationships economically with Russia that we have to depend on, particularly in the energy sector. Having said that, uh, Turkey's committed not to allow Russia to circumvent sanctions through Turkey. And so we're working with them uh, collaboratively on that issue. But it's extremely important. Those, those relationships uh, have to be strong. Uh, and sometimes it's a challenging relationship because of Turkey's cultural, historical relationships, economic relationships with Russia. Uh, but like I said, they remain committed to uh, Ukraine sovereignty. And uh, they've challenged the Russians in a number of areas, not just in Ukraine. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's a productive relationship. 
On another front, Ambassador, the Israel-Gaza war, I don't think a lot of people appreciate Turkey's role or its potential role in, in resolving this in some way. Um, President Erdogan been very critical of Israel, obviously, has called for a ceasefire. Um, what can he do to help bring some kind of a, a, a lasting solution? That's a great point. Um, you know, there again, you have war to the north in Ukraine, war to the south in Gaza, and Turkey sits right in the middle. Um, as a 97 percent Muslim country, obviously, there are deep feelings of affinity with the Palestinians. And, and so they, they, uh, they're very critical of what Israel has done uh, in terms of going into Gaza. Having said that, uh, they haven't cut ties with Israel. And, and they have uh, expressed a willingness to act as a guarantor you know, the day after and to work with their other regional partners uh, for a lasting peace. They're very supportive of the two-state solution, as we are. Uh, so I, I think we'll be working. I mean, it's tough to see any long-term durable solution in Gaza without regional powers like Turkey playing a role. Yeah, you're right in the middle of, of a lot of, a lot going on in this world. I know you don't want to talk politics, and I respect that. But just generally speaking, if you're talking to some of your, your former colleagues, how is life on the outside? <laughs> there is life after the Senate. No, it, it, it's, uh, it's great. I mean... I, Despite the dysfunction you see sometimes, there are good people there on both sides of the aisle trying to do the right thing. And uh, I think they'll come through on Ukraine and uh, on a number of these issues. So Let's hope so. U.S. Ambassador Senator Jeff Flake, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Always good to see you. Yeah. Still